Hey, this is Judge Waits bringing you some hardcore domination on the map Mirage. I'm not going to spend any time talking about this gameplay or anything like that. Instead, I wanted to talk to you guys today about servers. I want to talk about listen servers or player host servers, dedicated servers, and also the cloud service that we hear a lot about. There is a little bit of confusion that I hear people when they're talking about this sort of thing, so I thought I'd tell you what I do know. I am not an expert or anything like that, so if I say anything wrong, you know, know that I am not claiming to be an expert and feel free to correct me but let's get right into the different types of servers and let's start off with of course call of duty call of duty and let me specify uh, the console versions of call of duty not the pc versions because that uses dedicated servers but the console versions of call of duty use what's called a listen server aka a player host server so basically what happens is the game looks at everybody in the lobby and it tries to pick who the best host is going to be for that particular match and then that person's Xbox or that person's PlayStation will act as the server for the game meaning everybody's information will go to that person and then back so in this process of trying to determine the host, you know, the game looks at everybody's bandwidth and everybody's latency to see who's going to be the best host. The problem with that is somebody could have great bandwidth, but not the greatest latency or vice versa. So the game has to make a decision. Who is it going to pick? So you might get stuck with some great bandwidth. But, you know, it might be a little bit laggy because that information is getting delayed a little bit. All in all, you're kind of stuck with what type of lobby that you're in. You know, you could be in a lobby where nobody has a great connection, great bandwidth, or great latency. So you're going to get a pretty rough game to play. So, you know, obviously you see the downsides, other downsides. You know, that person that you're connecting to, they could have great bandwidth one minute, but then halfway through the match, say somebody in their household gets on Netflix and starts downloading something. That's obviously going to create some issues or change the dynamics in different ways. You know, the other thing with host player servers or listen servers, a lot of times a person that is picked to be the host either has a pretty good advantage because their latency is super low since they're connecting to their own Xbox. Or sometimes they have some disadvantages because their Xbox is actually used to run everything that's going on. So it's being taxed by having to take care of all that information. And think about this too. This is what allows people to cheat because somebody can go in and modify their console and when it gets picked to be the host then that all that information is going to be coming through their console so that's how people are able to cheat during a game now this doesn't happen a lot I think most things are just lag you know related but this definitely does happen I've seen some crazy things happen in different games Another problem that you see with player hosted servers is that if that player that is the host, say he gets a horrible host disadvantage or something like that, if that person backs out, you know, best case scenario, you get a host migration during the game. Worst case scenario, the game ends and you're out of luck. So, you know, I think there are a lot of disadvantages to player hosted servers, and I'm sure if you play Call of Duty, you've experienced most of them. It just seems like a really uneven playing field. That's why I would never brag about doing well in a Call of Duty game. And when I hear people brag, you know, if you think about it, there are so many other factors that could go into the way you are playing during a match. I don't think it's really fair to be like, oh, I'm so great. You could just have the best connection and always be picked as host or something like that. But let's move on. I don't want to spend too much time just on listen servers. Uh, let's talk about the advantages or why companies go to listen servers. Well, obviously, I'm sure you're going to know the number one reason. That is cost. It is super expensive to rent servers or to have servers and maintain them, especially for the game the size of Call of Duty. Now, I would like to argue that Call of Duty makes enough money to make that possible. But, you know, primarily, a lot of games don't go this route because of the money. I mean, think about if you're a game just starting up, if you can save some money and let the person's console be the host and you don't have to pay for servers, that's going to be a big advantage for you and allow you to actually maybe make a game where you couldn't if you actually had to pay for dedicated servers. And speaking of dedicated servers, let's move on and talk about them. So these dedicated servers, instead of picking a player's console to act as the dedicated server and having all the information run through that particular console, we instead have this computer sitting out on the internet and everybody connects to that particular computer and then that particular computer handles all of the host duties so everybody's console is free just to be the client instead of having to worry about hosting the game 
as a result of having the computer hosting everything instead of a console you're able to do more maybe you could have bigger maps or maybe you could have tanks and planes like you see with battlefield in a particular match also you don't have to worry about people cheating because it's not running through somebody's xbox all that information as a general rule too obviously you're going to have better connections because you are going to be connecting to these servers who have uber bandwidth and really low latency and everything like that so you know there are a lot of advantages to going with these dedicated servers of course this costs a lot of money if you want to have these servers yourself you have to house them somewhere you have to have people working on them and you have to pay for them and you know maintain them of course you can rent them from companies like amazon or rackspace there are some big providers but they cost like i said a lot of money to do that now you're gonna have to excuse me because I had to switch computers so I know this is gonna be sounding different but getting back to the dedicated service the only other downside that I've seen with dedicated servers is when a new game comes out because a lot of times these people have to guess how many servers they're gonna need and they're not sure exactly what the demand is going to be so it's not like they can just uh, turn on a bunch more servers it takes some time to actually get more things going so a lot of times when I play a new game I usually play in the evening and it is very hard for me to actually find a match at that point in time so you know that's kind of a downside it only takes them a few days to get all that worked out though so it's not a huge issue but it can be frustrating when that new game comes out and you really want to play it I think you see this more or actually notice it more from companies that actually have to rent their servers instead of the ones that actually have their own servers. It's easier to ramp things up when these servers are your own. And that kind of brings me to the last thing I want to talk about, and that is the cloud. What is the cloud? Basically, the cloud is just another word for the company's group of dedicated servers or the company's group of servers that they have. So Xbox Live's cloud or Xbox's cloud is just their group of servers. So they have 300,000 on their way Sony has a huge cloud uh, Amazon has a huge cloud to run all their websites and do all their connections and everything like that so keep that in mind when you hear companies talking about the cloud now obviously when Xbox Live or Xbox adds all these servers and when Sony adds servers and everything like that that makes everything just a whole lot smoother it's kind of interesting too I kind of want to shift stories and I want to talk about Titanfall I'm sure you're familiar with that game and it being an Xbox box exclusive but the people with respawn said one of the reasons are probably I'm guessing one of the main reasons that they went to Xbox as an exclusive is because when they were looking for dedicated servers, Xbox gave them access to their cloud or to their servers at a ridiculously low amount of money. So I'm sure when they were looking around, Respawn was going out, I'm sure they said, hey, PlayStation, what will you do for us? Hey, Xbox, what will you do for us? And one of the things that probably Xbox threw in was access to their dedicated servers at, like I said, that really low rate. Right, cheaper than they could get it through Amazon or Rackspace. Now, I don't know about you, but I've heard a lot of rumors about Titanfall coming to the PlayStation and everything like that. I wonder if this will play a role in that. You know, did Xbox say, hey, we're only going to give you dedicated servers or access to our cloud for a year, and then we'll reevaluate? Uh, I don't know how that's going to work out. I don't know if PlayStation will come back and say, hey, we're going to give you access to our cloud too, super cheap, or maybe we're going to beat Xbox and we want you to come be an exclusive over here. You know, I don't know. I'm sure they have lots of agreements, lots of lawyers involved in all of this but kind of interesting to think about I wonder what would happen if one of the consoles went to Call of Duty or Activision and they said, hey, we're going to give you free dedicated servers, but we want you to be an exclusive for us. Now, obviously, Activision enjoys selling to both consoles. They make a lot of money, and I'm sure they'd have to throw in more than just dedicated servers, probably a lot of money to make an exclusive. But I wonder if somebody would actually, would that be enough to get people to switch over to consoles? Now, obviously, that's never going to happen or anything like that, but I'm just weird and I like to think about things like that but let me know would that be enough i mean could you imagine call of duty with dedicated servers and getting rid of all the things that drive us nuts would that be enough for you to switch over to the other system for me it definitely would be because this game can be pretty darn frustrating but like i said it's never going to happen but let me know what you think about this video if you got any questions or comments make sure you leave them for me as always though take care and god bless